My name is Jason Reed. This is my second speech to this group. And I grew up in a community called El Dorado Hills. Today, El Dorado Hills is a Richlands playground. Back then, it was nothing. It, was, it had a crusty old railings that when I was a kid was a Piggly Wiggly. Inside that crusty old Piggly Wiggly was a bank and a post office. For fun as kids, we would go cow tipping, throw rocks at beehives, and we used to grab those little acorn, they're black balls, or not acorn, but they're oak tree black balls, and we used to sit on the hillsides and throw them at big cars as they'd come by. We were light and airy, but that's what we did for fun. The problem is, us kids grew into big kids. And when you enter high school, do you really want to go cow tipping, throw balls at cars, and throw rocks at beehives? Nope. So you have to find something else to do. And as life always seems to merge and go, mischief seems to find. So us high school students, we had a hangout. This is called Brown's Ravine. I happen to live in a house right here. This is Green Valley Road. This is Francisco Boulevard. And for those who know El Dorado Hills, the purple place is a little up here. Brown's Ravine happens to sit at the bottom of this hill. And it goes into Folsom Lake, as well as there's this little tiny road where I lived in this house. There's an electrical substation. We, as high school students, happen to figure out a way, and avoid the Darwin list, I might add, on, on rigging up a little electric light. It was very simplistic. Screw it in, on. Unscrew it, off. We also figured out a way to wire up our 8-track players and our cassette tapes later on. One night, a fellow student came down. And this fellow student graduated a year or two earlier than, than I did. And he was talking about his experience at Sacramento State, and living in the dorms. And he also talked about his internship that he was doing at Sunrise Mall. Part of his internship was to be Santa Claus during the holidays. And the second one was to be the Easter Bunny. <laughs> okay. This happened to be a March day, right before Easter. And he got to talking about this Easter Bunny and how he was trying on the costume, and had to take the costume to the cleaning shop. And somehow, he revealed that he had the pink bunny suit in his car. And me, the little devil horns, and mischief, couldn't let that go. And I tossed him a king cobra, which for those of you who don't remember those, that was a beer. And I can assure you, you get lots of attention when you have a gigantic pink bunny suit on, on the side of the road, and you get on all fours and hop across the road. <laughs> we would wait. So the headlights would hit us right here on our legs. And then he would hop across the road. Now in this area, over here, this house is very crude drawing, obviously. There was a creek that ran through here and had lots of briar brush, brambles, blackberries. Perfect hiding place. And so what we would do is we would hop across the road in that pink bunny suit, and I would pull him into the blackberries 
and then we would wrap a dark colored sheet around us. And the rest of the people would sit over here at the electrical substation with the light out and giggle and laugh. There were three incidents that stuck out in my head that night. First one was a guy who obviously was up at the purple place having a few beers that night. He was driving in his Chevy truck and he stopped on the side of the road. And he started talking. He rolled down his window and he started talking about how he was going to become famous that night. And he was going to notify Robert Stack, who happened to be the host of Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> and he would be on his TV show. And he just continued on and on and on. And once again, everybody over here snickered and laughed at this was all going on. A second incident in my mind occurred when we were, we did it about a total of 12 times that night. The second incident that stood out was this guy who was driving a big, gigantic um, Lincoln Town Car. I remember specifically it was gold in color. Mm -hmm. And we waited till his headlights came, we hopped across the road again, and then he got out of his car. And he came, and the next thing we know, we hear the pumping of a shotgun. And we could hear this guy talking and just yelling at the top of his lungs. And he was out to find this new species. <laughs> and his friend at UC Davis was going to relish in the knowledge. And he couldn't wait to tell him. And he was running around, pumping that shotgun, listening as loud as he could. He was trying to flush us out, I guess. And once again, the others over here continued to snicker and laugh. The last incident which took place, after that incident, everybody scattered. They were a little nervous. Me and my friend were the last two stuck around. We had, a beer, we had our beers to finish. And we literally decided to do it one more time. And then we would go across the way back to my house. And that night, we did it one more time. And as I pulled him into the briar brush, because it, I happened to notice the CHP logo flash by. And we took off running. We ran down that creek. We came up on the other side. As we started coming up the other side, we could hear the car being thrown into reverse, accelerating, braking again. The car, you could hear the transmission going through the clunk, 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 clunk as he's throwing it back in the gear. And he tried to follow us through. And if anybody's ever ran through brambles, knows blackberries grab. They'll rip your skin. So on that night, I can only imagine what he thought when he went back to his CHP office in Placerville. I'm assuring you, he didn't tell anyone that he ran through the briar brush chasing a gigantic pink bunny on the way before <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tosa.